Hey guys, I'm Craig and today for the Surfboard Guide, we're going to check out the Shiitake HP by Panda Surfboards. So this here is the Shiitake HP, I believe the HP is for high performance. Uh, you would have seen about a year or two ago, we got to check out the Shiitake Twinser by Panda Surfboards. I think I rode that around a 6.8 or a 6.9, a little bit longer, um, a lot of similarities, very different. Um, but yeah, that was really good from like one foot rip bowls, that thing connected sections really well, had great flow, you know, the increased volume, great paddle power. Uh, and then waves were bigger and better in that kind of six to eight foot range. It was like a step up. It got into waves nice and early, held its own, could surf at a very high level, but also cruise. There wasn't too much that board couldn't do and it was a whole lot of fun. That was my first kind of iteration and introduction to the uh, Twinser world and I was pretty frothing on it. I found the Twinser, um, you know, fin configuration and setup really allowed you to have your foot almost anywhere and it was always kind of in the right spot. I find with, um, you know, quads, thrusters, whatnot, you need to make sure your foot is placed really well between the fins or over the fins or even back on like the kick of the tail pad. But with the Twinsers, I felt like even if your foot was too far forward, uh, it still would turn and it gave you this kind of greater pivot circle. But anyway, talk a little bit more about that later. So the Shiitake HP that I've been riding is a 6.1. It's 6.1 by 20 and 8th by 2 and 9 16 and it's 34.1 litres. So looking over it, a lot of similarities to the uh, Shiitake Twinser, but they have made some changes with the, the foil and the concave. Uh, but looking over it, a little bit of beak in the, a little bit of a beak in the front end, um, which allows increased volume under the chest and through the front. Um, you know, fairly kind of wide. Uh, 20 and 8th, a little bit wider than I normally ride in a 6.1, and it also seems to hold that width. So I'd say compared to a shortboard, because it's not quite a shortboard. This wants to cruise and carve, not maybe surf as vertically. It's a little bit wider through that front end, so it holds a lot of width and volume. So you've got a lot of volume under your chest, making paddling really easy. And then it holds it through the board, and then this last kind of, probably third, starts to narrow into a really kind of nice and tidy swallow tail, uh, where that it comes a little bit narrower, and then, you know, makes it much easier to pivot off the tail. Um, the actual, the deck of the board is fairly kind of flat. It's not a flat deck, but it definitely doesn't like, you know, slowly uh, decrease across to the rail. It holds a lot of volume, probably out till, you know, around where that wax line ends. And then it comes into a nice mid rail. The rail's not too full. Two and nine, nine sixteenths, feels like a really nice kind of mid rail. And that bites really, really well through the water. Uh, flipping it over, I believe in the Shiitake Twinser, there was a V up the front of the board. So long ago now, I wrote it. Um, you can check out the review, we'll put a link in this so you can check that out. But what you have now is a single that comes through the front of the board, and then it feels like a bit of a V off the back of the tail there. I'm not sure if it's a double, but you can definitely feel the string arrays through the fins there. And what that does, it just allows that board, that board comes from quite a wide board into a much narrower tail, and you're allowed to pivot off that back foot, rail to rail, surfs really easy. Um, you know, for turning everything, really easy to surf and a whole lot of fun. enough to have the shiitake hp for quite a while now probably the best part of a year i got it really early off blake when it kind of kind of was a model kind of wasn't a model he was doing some for team wasn't available in australia at the time but i was frothing after how much i love the twins and i felt like i was doing some really good surfing on it i was frothing to my best surfing anyway i was frothing to check this out in like a shorter kind of more shortboard-esque um version so actually when i got it i think it was april last year which is a really good time for waves on the east coast of australia uh, as a family we went up uh, to queensland some of the point breaks are there and i was able to surf it on you know a couple of spots where um longer bigger and more open faces and i really felt like there wasn't much this thing could not do uh Carumbinelli is a point break there it can kind of be hot and cold i've surfed it a few times uh, but it can be a really long and really open way we can get multiple turns in i surfed this out there on a day probably four to five foot and i felt like it was some of the best surfing i've done in a long long time it was funny because at the time on the same trip i had like a mid-length twin that was probably about six inches long with quite more volume 
um, and then a little fish and they were all good boards for that style of wave but I just almost found myself riding this almost every day. Uh, those boards were great for the conditions but like I said, there wasn't much this could do, couldn't do. Uh, at 34 liters, a little bit of increased volume over say my shortboard. Uh, and with that width through the front, the bit of the beak and holding that volume, I was getting into everything as much as I wanted to say on that mid-length twin that was around the 40 litre mark. So I was getting into waves nice and early. I was getting lots of waves. Um, and the length felt really good. The board allows you to kind of do I'm talking to Blake, he, it, you know, the HP wants to go into more of a high performance realm where the Shiitake Twinser was longer, it was more of a cruisier board. This is a little bit more high performance, but he still does talk about the board. You know, the twins are kind of slowing you down, not to do so much vertical surfing, but actually really wanting to carve. And what I was really enjoying with this board was when I was getting really wide and nice open sections, I was allowed to really lay down a rail. And the Twinser will talk a little bit more later. It's almost like I was really... It sounds silly, but when you're doing a turn, you're always engaging your rail. You need your fins and your rail to engage so you have hold. But I was really quite reliant on my rail more so than the fins in, say, a quarter of a thruster, and it was a really nice feeling. Um, felt like I kind of really, you know, pushed myself and kind of challenged it to a different level. Um, even though Blake said it's not about being surfed vertically, it definitely can surf vertically. We've got a few clips where, you know, there's a couple little little Rios and stuff like that, nothing too crazy. Uh, but I felt it could do most of the stuff all your performance shortboards can do. But when you've got a chance to lay this into rail, into a carve, and again, you'll see some clips of some, you know, some degrade surfing, but a few carves, you can see the rail uh, sort of bite, the fin system, and it feels really nice. It does move through water really, really nicely. It's funny with the length, as well, because um, I'd say my shortboard's now probably around 5'11", 6'0". So at 6'1", I by no means say it's like a mini step up, but it definitely was something I was grabbing when waves were kind of in the uh, three to four foot. So when waves are kind of head high to overhead uh, and they were better, this is what I grab. Uh, in those sort of waves, you're not trying to get too, too radical and stuff like that. And this was the perfect blend. Like I said, this has a lot of like down the line flow, really good speed, and it really likes to carve. So, you know, when I'm getting myself now in, you know, four foot kind of plus waves, I'm really enjoying, you know, getting open faces, laying the board on rail, and this did it all perfectly. That increased volume probably over my shortboard volumes at around like 31, 32, got me into waves nice and early. Um, and the design of the board, the rail and everything, just, just light to carve, had really good flow. And it, yeah, it was, I think I was definitely grabbing when waves are a little bit bigger and better. I did surf it when waves were, you know, kind of less than stellar and the thing was fine. Again, that increased volume comes into play, getting into waves really nice and easy, um, pumping, getting across flat sections, the board has lots of natural speed and it's just really, really easy to surf. Look at the Shiitake HP Twinser without talking about the Twinser fin setup. So this is the Twinser fin setup. Those that are unfamiliar, a Twinser is a four fin setup, but it's not a quad. It's kind of like a twin fin setup and it has these leading fins here, which I believe are called canids. Uh, I hope I said that correctly. And I believe the theory behind them is the canids kind of break water. And then these, the rear or your main sort of twin fins go through the water without um, having to break water any drag. And it's just much more efficient through the water. Um, are the Twinsers fast? Yes, the Twinsers, two Twinsers I've surfed have been very, very quick boards. Um, they're also really easy to surf. Like I said in the Shiitake HP review, and I'll say it again here, I feel like the Twinser and what I really liked about it, it gave me a greater sweet spot. I feel like with thrusters and quads, but mainly with thrusters, you've really got to have your foot in the right spot. If your foot's not in the right spot, over your back fins, you're doing some pretty crappy turns. And a lot of the time I actually, because I ride boards that are probably lower volume to my weight, I find my foot, my foot is a lot further up the board. And sometimes I'm not in the kind of optimum position to do the turn that I want to do. In the Twinser, that is not an issue. I'm not saying you can have your feet like, you know, three foot up the board, but there is a much greater sweet spot for where your foot can be and how the board will work. Um, it was really funny looking into this sort of stuff. I was learning more about the Twinsers because I don't know a lot about them. You know, they've had different iterations over the years and then been forgotten for long periods of time. But what I thought was really interesting, I think in 89, maybe in 88, but then in 89, Martin Potter, uh, when he was on the world tour, came across surfing lots of twin fins and doing really well, came across the Twinser 
um, had it in a few different boards and in his 89 um, campaign he had six tour event wins I believe and he got the 1989 world title and a Twinza was part of his um, quiver for his 89 campaign so you know beyond then it, it hasn't really been popular and I'm sure there's some Twinza diehards out there that have had him in boards over the year and never forgotten about them but it was really cool to see you know my first um, you know introduction to him was a few years ago through Blake and actually I'm seeing more and more shapers now over the last few years putting twinses on different models. And I think that's great. I think it's a really great fin system that's easy to surf. And, and as per the design, it's really efficient across water. The twins of fins that I've been riding, uh, these are by Naked Viking Surf and they're a fin that they did with Panda. Um, these probably aren't available to everyone. So if you wanna check these out, um, Captain Finco now do a, um, a Panda twins of fin. Um, setup and it's exactly the same as this. Um, so you might see these strange little uh, FCS single tabs in the front for these small removable canards because I want to take this board overseas and have a removable fin system but a lot of the boards he'll do and the previous shiitake twins that we checked out had a fixed front fin and then futures in the rear. Uh, if you are to check, you're able to unable to get these um, NVS fins or the Captain Finco fins and you get you order a board with um, glassed in canards at the front um, I rode the T1s in the back by Futures, so they're red um, twin fin, uh, they've got a nice soft flex, really good fin. I rode them in the rear as well, and they felt absolutely perfect. I rode them in the Shiitake Twins review we did a while ago, and I also rode them in the HP Shiitake, uh, and the T1 felt great. So you can order this board with glassed in canids, and that was in my previous Shiitake Twins, and it felt really good, and I put the T1s in the back. Uh, had I not been able to get these fins, and these were glass ins, I would have done the same thing. I absolutely love the Shiitake HP. As I said, we checked out the Shiitake Twins up a couple of years ago now, and I absolutely loved it. Um, I loved the length of that board. I loved it when it was one foot, when it was bigger. But what I really liked was the Twinza setup. That was my first time having a Twinza and a surfboard, um, and I wasn't sure if it was that, you know, the design and length of that board or as a Twinza setup. But now I've had a chance to check out the Shiitake HP. It's definitely the Twinza. I think it's a great system for anyone who's a very probably you know really a lot of a lot to, to get from it as someone as a beginner intermediate i feel like it's so easy to surf on the twins are you know regardless where i have my foot you know i have a say i had a thruster i'd always want to make sure my foot is in a really good spot to turn over the fins but on the, on a twins are i feel like there's this greatest sweet spot so when i go to turn if i was on a thruster and my foot was like here i'd feel a bit wonky and i'd probably do a pretty crappy turn um but with the sh the twins are set up you have this greatest sweet spot and regardless where my fin is it's still kind of the right spot you know because of that um i think it's a really great setup and i really would recommend it to a whole bunch of people um the design of the board it says it's hp it's high performance but it's also pretty forgiving there's a lot of volume through the board making it easy to paddle um and while it's probably not a board for they say a beginner beginner i think someone's an intermediate through to an advanced surfer or definitely advanced surfer will get a lot out of this board it's easy to surf easy to paddle and it's super super capable look overall I've absolutely loved the Shiitake HP and I'd like to thank Blake from Panda Surfboards for the opportunity to check it out and hopefully get a chance to check one out too. Thanks so much for watching.